Well, hello there. It's good to see everybody again. So today we're going to try something a little different. I'm going to try to start a new series on a little bit different subject than what I normally do. Hopefully it does better than last time. Last time I posted a couple of movie reviews back a while back and went kind of off my normal trajectory. It went over like a fart in church. I think like three people watched those videos. <laughs> is a fairly big part of my life over the past you know 20 25 years fitness i was thinking about maybe calling it like fitness friday or health tip tuesday i i don't know i want to keep it fairly wide open i don't want to restrict it too much because i want to be able to do it about home gym garage stuff or you know healthy eating or fitness tips or just really anything uh in that category so yeah you're probably thinking well jeremy why in the hell would we want to take health tips from you what what are your credentials what makes you think you're a uh, aficionado of the health and nutrition well i have been a gym rat my entire life since i was 15 years old i've been in gyms working out i was part owner of a gym for quite a while. Uh, I was a certified trainer for training for warriors. I have a ton of friends that are in the fitness industry that own gyms that are dietitians and physiologists. And I've just been in the industry since I was very young and it's a big part of my life. I spend a lot of time learning and reading about health and fitness because it has always been a big part of my life and it's something that's always interested me. And I've been in great shape. I've been in crappy shape because I let it slide. So I feel like I have a, a pretty good perspective on what being in shape feels like, what not being in shape feels like and how to go from one to the other. Am I an expert in everything? No. Am I a doctor? No. These are my personal opinions based on my life experience with exercise, fitness, and health and nutrition. So hopefully you can get a little something out of this. Today, we're gonna to be doing 10 things that I think everybody should be trying to do every day to just overall live a healthier, more optimized life. Number one, go outside get outside a little bit every day. We need to get outside, we need that fresh air. They've done some tests that show that the air inside is two to five times more polluted than the air outside. We need that experience of being in nature. We need the vitamin D from the sun. Vitamin D is super important. It's called a vitamin, but it's really more of a hormone. It's really imperative for a lot of things in your body to keep you healthy. Some of the best ways to get up and get your body moving in the morning is to get outside and let some sun hit your skin. You have photoreceptors in your skin in, that actually help your body know that it's time to wake up and be active, get your day going, get outside more. Number two, exercise. Part of us being indoors and a lot of people having office jobs, sitting all day long, we're extremely sedentary. This doesn't need to be 45 minutes in the weights room doing squats and deadlifts, even though that is great. I know a lot of people maybe don't have access to a gym. You could go on a bike ride, you could go on a walk, you could go on a jog, do a workout in your living room, do some jumping jacks, some push ups, some sit ups, some body weight stuff. Exercise releases endorphins, which keep you in a good mood, it helps depression, it helps anxiety, it decreases all kinds of risks of disease, heart disease, it helps with your cholesterol, helps with maintaining a healthy weight. You'll find that when you go to bed at night, it is way, way easier to fall asleep. Exercise is a powerful thing that I promise you, if you add a little bit more to your daily schedule, you're gonna be happy about it. Number three on our list, sleep. This is a way bigger one than I thought. I have historically been very guilty of not doing this. I have been one of those guys that's like, oh, I can run off four or five hours of sleep. If you've never listened to Joe Rogan's podcast, 1109, it's with a guy called Matthew Walker. You've got to go listen to that. It will completely change your, your whole opinion of sleep. This Matthew Walker guy is a professor at Berkeley. Dude is a sleep genius. He knows everything there is to know about sleep. He goes into great detail over the length of this podcast about how important sleep is. Human growth hormone is released at night when you're sleeping, which aids in your muscle recovery when you are exercising and just healing in general. So if you're not sleeping good, you're not ever healing. Your brain's not rebooting. You're sluggish the next day. You don't deal with stress as well. There, there's a whole host of things that go on when you when you don't sleep well and a whole host of things that function way, way better when you are sleeping well. Really, if you're interested at all, check out that podcast. Try to get at least seven to eight hours of sleep. Number four is hydrate. You got to drink that water. I know, I get it. Another one I've been guilty of in my life. Matter of fact, at one point in my life, I was guilty of drinking as many as six Mountain Dews a day. I'll probably die five years younger because of me doing that. I just, I loved the Dew back in the day. What can I say? It was 
You can go for three weeks or longer without food, but not much longer than I think two or three days without water. So that should just tell you the importance of water. Your body is made up of water. If you don't have enough water, you do not function properly. Staying properly hydrated keeps your kidneys fleshed out. It keeps your blood volume up, keeps your hair and your skin and everything looking better. It aids in the proper absorption of vitamins. I think the rule of thumb is about two or three liters a day minimum being active and living in Florida where it's hot as hell. I find that you know a little under a gallon a day is when I feel good and I feel well hydrated. Now, a little warning, if you, if you don't drink a lot of water, when you first start drinking water, you're gonna pee every 15 minutes. It's gonna seem like you're overhydrated and you're like, I don't need all this water, I'm peeing every 10 minutes. That's because your body's not used to being well hydrated. But if you stick with it, your body will acclimate and start to absorb that water a little better. It is a little annoying, but you'll get past it and I promise your body will thank you. Moving right along with these bad boys, we're cooking. Number five. Eat healthy. I'm not saying you have to follow any diet plan. Matter of fact, diet plans in general, especially crash diets, generally aren't a good idea. And I know this is kind of one of these sayings that you hear and you're like, oh, Jesus Christ, people with this. But you, you really do have to get in a habit that can be a lifestyle. Because if you change your eating for three weeks and then you fall back, you're going to be doing this and you're going to get frustrated and you're constantly going to be going up and down with your weight and all this and it's bad. You can actually cause metabolic damage from that. You want to stick with something that's maintainable, make healthy choices in your eating. Replace something bad with something good. Start out with like maybe the drink more water. Then change to try to eat a salad every day or try to eat something green every day. Take sodas out of your lives or whatever. These are just examples. One of the things I think a lot of people do is everybody gets on here and they preach about a particular diet and they say, you got to do this diet. This is the way to eat and you got to do this. If you don't do this, you're not doing it right. And different diets affect different people different ways. It's hard to say any one particular way of eating is the right way to eat, but you can guarantee by making more healthy choices, cutting processed foods, trying to eat real food every day, your body's gonna thank you for that and you're gonna do a lot better. Look at it this way. If you're giving your car crappy gas that's like super low octane gas and it's kinds of shit and stuff and it's bad, is your car gonna run good? No, it's not. Now, if you're giving your car that premium, high test, good stuff, your car's gonna run like a race car. Your body's kind of the same way. If you're putting all this garbage and crap in, it's not gonna run at its optimum level. If you're feeding it good whole foods and the stuff it's meant to burn, you're gonna do a lot better, you're gonna feel a lot better, and you're gonna be a lot healthier. Number six, sugar is the devil. There's been a lot of studies recently that people are linking heart disease closer to your sugar consumption over your cholesterol. Type two diabetes, obviously, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, high blood pressure, obesity, obviously, which ties in with all the other ones. Tooth decay, we all know that from a kid, you eat too much sugar, you get cavities. I mean, one study I read said that people who got 17 to like 23 or 22% of their calories from sugar a day had like a 38% higher chance of dying from heart disease. That's scary. Another study that I read showed that adults that had four servings or more of soda a day were 30% more likely to be diagnosed with depression. Sugar is just bad stuff. And don't get me wrong, I love it, it's good. I know it's delicious. You know, now they've come a long way with some of these sweeteners. There's, um, you know, stevia is a natural sweetener, uh, monk fruit, which is a natural sweetener that's, that's pretty good. There's one called erythritol, which is derived from fruits. And they're all like good alternatives to sweeten stuff if you've got a sweet tooth. And they are way better for you. Number Number seven, cut out part of your day to spend with family, friends, slash developing your relationships with your loved ones. It's easy to get tied up in the things we're doing in our jobs and our careers and this, that, what have you. It doesn't matter how successful you are in your career or how much money you have. If your personal relationships are in the tank, life's not really that fulfilling. That's why you have so many people that are dirt poor and extremely happy and you have a ton of people that are rich and have all kinds of issues with depression and they're lonely and miserable. Money isn't everything. Having good relationships with friends and family is one of the most important things in life. Even if you're just taking out 15 or 20 minutes to call a friend or call your mom or call your dad or call a brother or a sister or whatever, the stress reduction that does on your life to have somebody to lean on if you're having a bad day or just having somebody to enjoy something with. Spend some time every day nurturing your relationships. Tell somebody you love them every day. 
Number eight, be thankful for the things that are going good in your life. Try to be positive. Nobody likes a negative Nancy. You know, the more positive you are, I think you have a better outlook on life. You deal with stress better. Whether you write a list, some people like to write it down, or just mentally in your head, you can get kind of tied up with being busy and you know, deadlines and crap going on and stressed out and think of all the things that suck about life. It's really easy to forget how really fortunate you are. If you itemize those things sometimes, it can help you kind of see the good side of things and kind of just be grateful and be like, you know what, it's not so bad. I've got all this crap in my life that is awesome. Some of it sucks. Nobody's life is 100% ice cream and rainbows. I know I've had some periods in my life where businesses weren't doing well or this, that, or what have you, and I had a lot of stress. And man, physically, it can tear you apart. I mean, you can really physically start just taking a dive only because of stress. Stress is so bad. I think a big part of combating stress, other than a lot of these other things I mentioned, exercise and sleep and blah, blah, is also just a good mental attitude. Cut out a little time every day, be thankful. Number nine, meditate. Probably like, oh, good Lord, he's going to start like chanting mantras and stuff. And, that, <laughs> and I'm not going to do that. But we are busy people and we are looking on social media. We got phones, emails, computers, we're typing. And, it's, and meditating doesn't have to be like full meditation. You know, it could be just spending a little bit of time in the quiet by yourself just to kind of relax and take some deep breaths. Sometimes just five minutes. Like it does a tremendous amount. It actually lowers your blood pressure. It's crazy. Just taking like four or five deep breaths and trying to relax and clear your head can make a physical drop in your blood pressure. That's how powerful it can be. I read a big article by the Mayo Clinic the other day. Now, mind you, the Mayo Clinic, th this is not some Jesus sandal wearing hippies we're talking about here. I'm allowed to say this because I wear flip flops all the time and had dreadlocks. Calm down before you get all offended about me saying Jesus sandal wearing hippies. This is the Mayo Clinic. I read a huge article where they talked about all the benefits of uh, meditation and how it's been proven to decrease anxiety and stress and help with tension headaches, help improve your sleep. If your mind's in a good place, your body's in a good place, you're in a good place. So take a few minutes out every day just to quiet your mind and relax. We're there, the finish line, baby, number 10. Learn something every day. In today's world, that is easier than ever. Just learn something every day. A small skill, a new recipe, uh, some facts that you didn't know. Better yourself a little bit every day. It is every bit as important to exercise your mind as it is to exercise your body. Listen to a podcast. There are a ton of great podcasts out there that are very informational. If you got a few minutes to watch YouTube videos. YouTube is a great platform. You know how much stuff I've learned from YouTube? I mean, you can look up a video on YouTube on how to operate on somebody. I don't recommend that, but you probably could. Point is, nobody has an excuse these days not to learn a little something every day. If you're busy and your day is booked up, there's gotta be at least a few minutes you're stuck in traffic or you're doing some kind of monotonous work where you can pop on a podcast and learn something. Audible, another great, and I'm not sponsored by Audible. I don't have any affiliations of them whatsoever, but I hate reading. I, I, I'm not a big reader. I don't enjoy reading. Lots of people do. You guys are awesome. If you enjoy reading, that's great. Reading is good for you. You can get audiobooks on just about anything. And now you, instead of having to read, you can listen to a book while you're stuck in traffic and learn something. I'm just saying, do something better yourself every day. Learn a little something. So that's 10, but I do have a couple quick honorable mentions that didn't quite make the top 10, but I do think these are important. Limit social media. People, I mean, I do YouTube. Okay, so I, I get it. I have Instagram. You don't need to check your Instagram feed 315 times a day. Check it a few times. I'm not saying don't use social media. I wouldn't recommend that. Like I said, I'm on YouTube. Reduce it a little bit. How many times have you been to a restaurant? You look around the restaurant and you see a table full of people and instead of socializing with each other and interacting and being present in the moment, they're all on their phones. Table like six people, all on their phones. Put the phone down. Nothing's going on on Instagram that's that important and just enjoy life. Be present. Enjoy the company of other people. In-person relationships are important for people. Limit the social media just a little bit. You'll be a better and happier person, I promise. And the last thing that I'll say, get up early. And I'm guilty. I love sleeping in. I don't always do this, but I do find that when I do, my day goes a lot better. When you get up early in the morning and everything's quiet before all the emails start humming and the phone calls start coming and everything starts popping, that's a great time every day to do some of the things that I had mentioned earlier in this video, like have a little bit of quiet time to yourself. Get your day planned and get your day going. You wake up late, then you're rushing to go to work and then you're stressed out and you're in the car and you're in traffic and you're flipping people off and hey, road raging and freaking out. That is a horrible way to start your day, all from sleeping too late and hitting that old snooze button too many times. Trust me, I've been guilty of it plenty. So get up early. But all right, guys. So 
I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know you probably heard a lot of this stuff from other people before, but this is stuff that I personally feel is the important stuff uh, for every day. Even if you did know some of these, maybe you didn't know all these, hopefully I sparked some ideas in your head of some, some things you might adopt into your, your daily routine. And hopefully this makes you a healthier, happier person. If you like this, you found it useful, hit that thumbs up button. That'll let me know. Hopefully we can do more of these. If you have any questions, as always, put them in the comments below. I will try to get back to you with something. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. I hope everybody is having a fantastic week and we will see you in the next video.